So many exoplanets, so little time. Hey guys, welcome back to The Stimulus. I'm Steph Evs, and here's what happened this week in STEM. NASA has discovered a new system of seven Earth-sized exoplanets orbiting a star about 40 light years or 235 trillion miles away in the constellation Aquarius. This exoplanet system has been named TRAPPIST-1 after the Belgian-operated Transiting Planets and Planetesimals Small Telescope in Chile that was used to find them. That is one heck of an acronym. The system was first discovered in May 2016 by TRAPPIST when researchers found three planets in the system. Researchers then used additional ground-based telescopes and the Spitzer Space Telescope to confirm the existence of two of the exoplanets, along with finding the five additional ones in the system. Spitzer is an infrared telescope that launched in 2003 and orbits the Sun, trailing just behind Earth. Although it wasn't initially intended to do so, it proved to be an excellent tool for studying TRAPPIST-1 since the star that the exoplanets are orbiting shows up the brightest in infrared light. Basically, scientists used Spitzer to look for when the exoplanets would cross in front of the host star in order to determine how many exoplanets are in the system and what their orbital patterns are. Scientists used data collected by Spitzer to measure the sizes of the exoplanets and were able to estimate the masses of six of them, and as a result, their densities. These estimated densities led scientists to believe that the exoplanets are most likely rocky, like our planet. The mass of the seventh planet has not yet been estimated, but scientists think it may be an icy, snowball-like world, but they'll need more information. So to recap, we found six potentially rocky Earth-sized exoplanets and Hoth. In addition to Spitzer, scientists used the Hubble Space Telescope in order to check out four of the exoplanets, including the three in the habitable zone, to try and get an idea about what their atmospheres consist of. In spring of last year, the Hubble team took a peek at the atmospheres of the two innermost planets and couldn't find any evidence to suggest that they had puffy, hydrogen-dominated atmospheres that are typically found on gaseous planets such as Jupiter or Saturn. This is further evidence that the planets orbiting closest to the star are likely rocky. While it is possible all seven of these planets may have liquid water on their surfaces, it is more likely to be found on the record three planets in the habitable zone. It is also the first time Earth-sized planets have been found orbiting this particular kind of star, an ultra-cool red dwarf. And I mean cool as in temperature-wise, not hip or whatever the kids are saying these days. How cool is this star? So cool that liquid water could exist on the planets orbiting close to it, which is way closer than Mercury or Venus. In fact, all seven planets orbit closer to their host star than Mercury Mercury does to our sun. Besides being super close to their host star, the planets are also packed closely together. So close, in fact, that if you were standing on the surface of one of them, you'd be able to see the next planet like we see our moon, maybe even better. You would also possibly be able to see the geological features on the planet's surface and clouds. These planets are also likely tidally locked, which means that they don't rotate, so it's always daytime on one side and always night on the other. The habitability question will be a big one to be answered going forward. Red dwarfs tend to be very active in their youth, so it may have wreaked havoc on these planets in their early stages which would have been quite a while ago. Scientists estimate that the planets are at least half a billion years old. So we know there's an awesome system full of planets far, far away. What now? Well, scientists are currently using the Kepler Space Telescope, which is known for finding exoplanets, to better get to know the planets that we found and to look for any more that may exist in the system. Additionally, in 2018, NASA is launching the James Webb Space Telescope, which could be used to help determine the atmospheric composition of these planets and see if they contain water, methane, and oxygen, which are considered to be the key ingredients for habitability. The James Webb Space Telescope will also analyze the surface pressures and temperatures of the planets. Unfortunately, we likely won't be visiting the TRAPPIST-1 system anytime soon. It would take a commercial jet 44 million years to get there, so unless we come up with a warp drive technology or Zephram Cochrane shows up to do it for us, we'll have to be satisfied admiring these seven planets from afar, like creepers. So that brings us to our question of the day. These planets don't have official names yet and are currently just going by TRAPPIST-1, A, B, C, D, etc. So what would you name them? Let me know in the comments section down below. As always, if you'd like to check out this story a little bit more in depth, I will include links to my sources down below along with links to all of my social media, so check that out in your free time. If you like this content and you wanna see more STEM-related awesomeness, feel free to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget, if you find any really cool STEM-related news stories throughout the week, you can always send them to me on Twitter at, at the stimulus using the hashtag twistem, and they just might make it into a video. But as always, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. Stay well, stay awesome, and I will see you next time.